Hello, this is Dr. Ronald Copeland. I have the privilege of serving as the Senior Vice President and Chief Equity and Inclusion and Diversity Officer at Kaiser Permanente. I really appreciate the opportunity to share a few words with you today about my commitment to the health equity agenda and the importance of trustworthiness as part of, of that agenda. When I think about my journey, my background, I think about my parents who were both raised in the racially segregated South, were part of the migrations to the North looking for better opportunities for themselves and for their children. I am one of eight siblings. So I learned a lot about sharing and team uh, in my formative years. But the fact that I grew up during a period of significant activism in the country, both as relates to the implications of racial inequities, uh, as well as the uh, social political uh, concerns that were raised around the globe and the nation uh, regarding uh, war uh, and uh, issues of trust and mistrust. Uh, I was compelled to, to take a stand for myself. Many of my role models were leaders of different persuasions who chose to take a stand and try to make a difference rather than just be spectators. Uh, and uh, my parents armed me with the belief that you can achieve uh, anything you set your mind to as long as your commitment and your purpose is just uh, and that any obstacle created by people potentially can be removed by people. Uh, and so my decision to be a physician, a surgeon, uh, and then uh, a, a military veteran, and then an executive medical director, and now leading our equity uh, and inclusion strategy and policy at Kaiser Permanente, all has given me multiple platforms to try to make a difference, to engage and team and lead uh, other people but also to witness uh, an organization that shares that commitment, Kaiser Permanente, uh, and how they have partnered with communities uh, in a significant way to achieve uh, the health equity agenda uh, in important and meaningful ways. Uh, and so when I think about uh, our mission statement to provide high quality care that is affordable and to improve the health of our members and the people we serve across the country. Inheriting that commitment is a belief system by Kaiser Permanente that in order to do that, uh, we have to be inclusive. We have to understand and have a diversity of our workforce, our physician force that mirrors the diversity of the communities we serve. Uh, and we've learned that that's an important element of trust building because if you have a, a workforce that reflects that diversity make up in all dimensions of the communities you serve, people see themselves reflected and represented within your organization at all levels, leadership of practicing physicians, support people. Uh, and our workforce lives in the same communities. And so we have built in internal advisors and external ambassadors you know, for the organization. And so that ear to the ground, that ability to speak in authentic language and communicate with people effectively, I think is a critical part of building a trust uh, on a long-term basis that you then can leverage in the case of emergencies like what we've gone through recently with the pandemic uh, crisis. And the other part of, of trust building, I believe, is demonstrating trustworthiness. And trustworthiness, I think, is really about showing up, uh, not just in matters of crisis, but on a regular basis. And when you show up, how do you behave? How do you speak? Are you speaking from a collaborative and inclusive framework? Are you honoring the, the lived experience, values, uh, cultural norms, uh, and day-to-day -day lived experiences of the people that you are there to serve? Do you intentionally partner with people uh, from the beginning to understand there are two experts uh, involved in the equation, the folks trying to sponsor and support important work and the folks who are there to help guide how it should be deployed, what will be, be meaningful and what should be prioritized. And I think that we built that into our infrastructure, our community health operations, our leadership, uh, and the things we have prioritized as areas of focus. At Kaiser Permanente, we're very clear that to be impactful in the health equity space, you have to understand the economic challenges, the social needs, uh, and you have to understand the role that social justice 
uh, and equity play uh, in people's day-to-day -day lived experience and ultimately what influences their health status uh, the most. And it's unusual uh, for most health systems to take all of that on under one roof. But because of our integrated model, our mission statement and our commitment, um, that's a framework that we operationalize on a day-to-day -day basis. And so by engaging and partnering with our communities, they help inform us about what their priorities and needs are. And we do our best to bring our resources, both financial, both leadership and sponsorship, and to use our voice uh, as a voice of advocacy for those whose voices are too often not listened to. And so whether we're talking about supplier diversity uh, programs where we are intentionally investing in women and minority owned small businesses to make sure that they become economic engines in their respective communities, that they then grow and provide jobs, that they invest in the community infrastructure, that that's a virtual cycle that we invest in in significant ways uh, and have done for a long time. Uh, we are building a social needs uh, understanding of practice uh, and have developed a program that we're really excited about called Thrive Local, which is interviewing our patients individually and the families around their social needs. Uh, we've discovered that patients have, uh, one out of four Americans have an unmet social need, almost regardless of their social economic strata. And that was important to understand. And as well, the issues that are part of that, whether it was food uh, security issues, whether it was uh, homelessness, whether it was lack of a job, whether it was lack of access to healthcare, all of these barriers are real and deprive people of a fair and equitable opportunity for achieving optimal health. And so we have created a program where we are individually and collectively assessing people's needs and then recognizing that in many cases, the needs can be met by social agencies available through community networks, but many people don't have the understanding or the means to make that connection. So being a partner, being a collaborator, being a connector to help people achieve uh, access to services that are already available to meet their social needs uh, has been a great learning for us and something that we're building on. Uh, through the uh, pandemic, we learned the importance of the digital era that's evolving in healthcare, whether it's telehealth, virtual meetings, or otherwise. And so our focus is how do we make those new accessible means for delivering care equitable in their distribution and their access for all the communities we serve. And so we don't exacerbate existing disparities, but actually narrow those gaps if not eliminate them. So I like to just wrap up my remarks by saying that in order for people to trust, you have to, uh, you have to be in their shoes. And the best way to be in their shoes is to let them tell their powerful uh, and informative, informative and inspiring stories uh, so that you are starting with a common understanding uh, and approaching this with a, a leadership and a inclusion orientation that includes humility. So when I think about what are some of the key lessons I've learned about trust building, uh, I, things that I hold dear are seeking first to understand then to be understood, you know, a lesson from Stephen Covey. I've learned that trust is very fragile. Uh, it takes a long time to build it, but only a second to destroy it. So make sure you remain worthy of grace in the eyes and the hearts of those that you choose to serve. And what I've learned from my patients in my 30 plus years as a practicing surgeon is that when I walk into the exam room, there's two experts in that room. It's me, the, the, the expert on surgical practice uh, and treatment, and the patient on their lived experience and their needs and what's meaningful uh, and what's important. And through equitable approaches to collaboration, true partnership, and listening skills, uh, most of the time that becomes a very successful and powerful union, achieving the goal at hand together. Uh, and for the health profession, I think people look up to us for leadership and for ethical and moral uh, principles. And so fighting on behalf of our patients, using our voice, our resources, our leadership platform to speak for those who are, as I said, often not listened to is paramount to achieving health equity and remaining uh, trustworthy. Thank you.